Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, 230 section of the symposium. Uh, my name is Ray Claxton. And I'm Tom Patton. And we have the priv privilege of teaching at the Gaylord College of Journalism and Mass Communication here at OU. Um, specifically, we have the privilege of teaching these students in our advertising major within the strategic communications um, area. Uh, Tom and I both come from the industry. Uh, I was an art director and advertising designer. And I was a uh, advertising copywriter and associate creative director at uh, both global agencies and uh, small specialty shops. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next one. so um, a little bit of context for about what you're about to see. Um, the next one too, please. Uh, in the advertising major, we have two courses that we teach for our more advanced students. Uh, one is advertising portfolio and the other is advertising or ad advanced copywriting. Right, and these uh, two, in these two courses, we're uh, preparing students for industry practice. So these are very industry intensive uh, with uh, industry timelines. And uh, we team art directors and copywriters up in a typical uh, agency, um, agency structures. And so um, it was with one of these projects that we wanted to challenge our students to imagine um, what they would create if they were the agency that was charged with uh, raising awareness about the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre, or if they were the agency in charge of promoting the Greenwood Rising History Center that's due to open uh, this summer or this fall. So uh, the teams consist of two art directors and one copywriter, uh, which mimics uh, agency teamworks. Uh, and we had five separate teams, there'll be five teams, uh, who took up the challenge, one in the fall of 2020 and for this semester in 2021. So this is ranging over two semesters. So with that said, we wanna step out of the way and uh, allow the students to present their work in their own words. Uh, please welcome our first team. So we have Anthony Sanders, Ellie Laguerre, and Bailey Fortnow. Fortnow. Oh, sorry. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are the first team from Professor Claxton and Patton's advertising um, portfolio and advanced copywriting class. And this is our presentation over Greenwood Rising. My name is Anthony Sanders. I'm Bailey Fortnow, and I'm from Lawton. I'm Ellie Laguerre, and I'm from Tulsa. I'm from Oklahoma City. I have to mention that before. <laughs> All right. And so just some general information that I'm sure you're all aware of, just the lasting effect of the Tulsa race massacre. Um, property damage ran into the millions. And the worst part of this, um, or one of the worst parts of this in our opinion is how few of us learned about this event in our primary education. So, and so just some general insight. This, our project began in the fall semester of 2020. I was the um, student in advanced copywriting and these two were in advertising portfolio. And I cannot stress enough that while we did each play our roles in this, it was a team effort through and through. So we start off with the next slide, please. Oh yeah, just a quick logo redesign. Um, I think you wanna talk about this? Yes, you can click the next slide. Um, so this is our logo redesign. We decided to choose the phrase 100 years of progress. We really wanted to highlight the fact that it has been 100 years since this massacre and we really haven't experienced the long-term ramifications that the community has. Um, and so we chose this green kind of symbolizing the Greenwood um, district in Tulsa. So this is our, these are our social ads. I'm gonna let Bailey talk about these. Yeah, okay, go ahead and change the next slide. So um, the big focus for the social ads was this concept of duality between the past and the present. So all of our photos that you see in this slideshow and in any of the future ads, they come from, um, what was it called again? The archive, the Greenwood archive on the Tulsa 2021 website. Yeah, so this archive. And um, other photos that we use that are a little bit more modern are gonna of course be stock photos of the resources we have available. But um, this ad in particular, this was kind of the first thing that jump started the idea of our campaign. So we stuck with the 100 theme and it says hundred years ago, a part of my family's history was destroyed. This year we rebuild it with the Tulsa Race Massacre Commission logo. And so we wanted to put these two photos together and kind of remind people of the lasting effect that this event has had on Tulsans. You can go to the next slide. This is another version of that. And it says hundred years ago, my race determined my future. 
Today, I am limitless. Next slide, please. And another version, 100 years ago, hatred and fear took everything from me. Today, love and hope will return it. So again, just that concept of duality and um, trying to give a personality and a face to this cause. And so for these next set of out of home ads, the real idea was combining the intersectionality of how much time has passed since this event took place and where we find ourselves today in regard to racial inequality. So next slide, please. So these are three poster ads. Um, and then you'll see on the next few slides that we dispersed them around areas, uh, urban areas. Uh, we tried to use kind of a resurrection theme. So as you can see, the words are almost in a cross and century is in the middle, really to highlight that century. Um, and so we have restart, lasting and history. They're all placed over images taken from the Greenwood archives. Um, and they kind of express how, despite what happened 100 years ago, these are the ways that people have dealt with the issues and have been able to rise through it all. And so here are uh, ideas of what these could look like in urban areas. And these are mock-ups. These aren't real, just in case anyone doesn't <laughs> know about that. Um, we were able to put these in photos ourselves. So these didn't actually happen. Yeah. And I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but these images are uh, fully from the massacre, from the days um, that it was happening. And they're really impactful images. And we know that they're sometimes a little bit jarring, a little graphic, but I think it's important to really expose exactly what happened and not sugarcoat anything. You can go to the next one. And so um, then we created one billboard ad. It's kind of similar, but uh, not with the cross. So you can keep it. We thought this image was just really powerful and it needed kind of a spotlight of its own. So it says, where we started does not determine where we go. Um, we really do want to express that in no way are things perfect now, and no way have people fully recovered from the race massacre, but where we are now is so much better than where we were. Um, and we think that the Greenwood Cultural Fund is making a giant difference. And here that is as yeah. if it were real. <laughs> and so our TV spot and storyboard focuses on a descendant of a victim of the Tulsa race massacre walking through the memorial and just experiencing the weight of the uh, the past events that have taken place there. So I'm just going to read it along and um, we can follow along with the storyboard. And these are our stock photos as well, because these are the resources we had available. So <clears throat> how long does it take for something to be history? Is yesterday history? Is it how they say time heals all wounds? Or is that up to the wounded? When the victims have a say in their own history, we no longer have to read between the lines to know the truth. That truth, which was taken along with the property of my great grandfather, one of the first black restaurant owners in post-Civil War America. And he was able to do that right here in Greenwood. He was a successful self-made black man and he was murdered for it. 100 years ago, my family, along with many other families in Greenwood, had a piece of their history stolen, burnt to the ground, and left to be forgotten. This year, we rebuild it. This place feels like my home because it should have been. Because its resilience is as strong as its legacy. Because Greenwood is rising. Memorial opening in spring 21. So yeah. And those are that completes the promotional material we had created for the Centennial Commission. And now we're just going to provide some of some anecdotes of our own of what our experience was like in creating this project. Okay, so I'm Bailey in case you forgot. And um, so yeah, we have all this material we created. We had a lot of fun doing it together, but there was a lot of other things that came along with working on a project that felt this heavy for lack of a better word. And um, I remember the first day I heard of the Tulsa race massacre. I was a junior in high school and I heard it from the only African-American teacher I had at that time not much in-depth knowledge, just knew that it happened. And now coming to do this project, I was able to gain a deeper understanding and what felt like a more personal connection to what happened. 
I also was given the chance to give exposure to something that needs that exposure and deserves it. And that's something that I had never done in my career as a young want to be advertiser. And um, that was a really priceless experience. I think a lot of times students don't get to do that while they're still in school. And I also got the opportunity to combine my education with something that I care about, which goes hand in hand with the last point. I'm Ellie. Um, I'm actually from Tulsa. And so this was a really important campaign to me because this was something that I wasn't super aware of as a child. I know that we probably touched on it in elementary, middle school, but it was never something that we really spent a lot of time learning. Um, so I think it's shot by doing something like this, we can shine more light on an issue that really does need more attention. Um, and it's been really humbling to learn about something and create art that portrays something good, portrays that a community is rising. My name is Anthony. I'll speak from personal experience when I say that when our professors Claxton and Patton presented us with the option of different real life clients to create promotional material for, I immediately knew that I wanted to choose this Greenwood Centennial Commission because the opportunity to work on something that really matters to you and you think serves a real purpose comes once in a blue moon. So that's why I was extremely humbled to work on this assignment and it changed our perspective on what advertising is and what it can be because it's one thing to create material for a company and you know carry out the motions and not get anything out of it but it's another thing entirely to create something that you feel like not only you're getting something out of but everyone from any walk of life can take something away from this regardless of where you're from so which is why we were extremely humbled when we found out that we were um, recognized for a bronze Addy award next slide please okay. Okay, so um, we completed our assignment in fall of 2020. It was our last assignment of the year, headed into winter break. And then a few months later, Professor Claxton and Professor Patton shoot us an email. And we found out that we had won a bronze Addy Award. And what an Addy Award is, it's a pretty big deal for a student, especially. Um, and it came through the Oklahoma City Ad Club. And it's basically um, a form of recognition for good work that um, a panel has decided they like. So that is all that we have for you today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening to us. And I hope you really enjoyed uh, our presentation. With that, we're gonna hand it back to our professors. Uh, hello, we are the second team with the advertising groups along with Gaylord College. Uh, my name is Stinson Fuller. I'm Ali Strong. And I'm Leanne Wilson. For our advertising campaign centered around Greenwood Rising, uh, the campaign slogan we have chosen to select was black history is your history. We believe that this represents an active voice, a call to action. Uh, we also believe that it not only highlights the history of Greenwood, but it also takes a modern stance to uh, current social issues. Coupled with our campaign slogan, we have created an anthem that encompasses our campaign. The anthem reads, we don't choose how we are educated, but we can choose how we educate. Our past is told to us, but we can write our future. What will we say? Are we the heroes of our story? We can amplify our voices of the future, not shying away from evils. We shine light on stories of resilience, pride, and hope. Black history is Oklahoma history. Black history is American history. Black history is your history. Um, another thing our group chose to do was create a logo design for the Greenwood Rising. Um, just because they needed some sort of branding to put on their advertisement. Um, so here we have our two logos um, in black and white for the Greenwood Rising History Center with the greenwoodrising.org below. So this is when we began to use our logo and our anthem designs for our social media posts. Um, and to start with, we did... Facebook. So our Facebook ad reads, um, did you know African Americans relocated to Oklahoma at the same time many Native Americans were forced to relocate? Oklahoma was a chance for African Americans to live freely and escape the harsh Jim Crow laws. Um, learn more about this history at greenwoodrising.org with our tagline, Black History is Your History. And this is a photo um, of before the massacre, and this is just um, what Greenwood used to be. Um, and this is actually a marching band um, from that time. 
And our next one is a series of Instagram ads. This is one that you could swipe through beginning with, do you know your history? Um, and then the middle slide is just a repeat of our anthem because it's really important and ending it with black history is your history. Um, in the back is a photo of the massacre, um, of a time in the massacre. And um, this is just really important because it's necessary not to shy away from photos like these um, because of the history around them. And lastly, we have an Instagram guide. Um, this is a new feature from Instagram. It was kind of introduced when um, the pandemic started. And this is just an opportunity for Greenwood Rising to uh, kind of showcase some of what Greenwood was before the massacre. So this is allowing viewers to click the guide and look through um, just different ads and posts regarding Greenwood. This one specifically is about a, um, a cleaning and laundry service that was um, around before the massacre. And it would just be an opportunity to show what kind of businesses were um, in that district and how it was uh, just a really thriving place for Black people and why it was called Black Wall Street. Um, so our team also made some print ads. Um, for the first one, we did a newspaper ad. Um, this one is just showing the mark of 100 years since the massacre occurred. Um, and here we have um, something that could be a museum guide um, or some kind of flyer or brochure um, that, could, that could be passed out at the museum. Um, again, displaying the 100 year mark on one of the flyers um, and another that um, just shows our slogan, Black History is Your History. Um, also saying learn more about your history. Um, and here we have a poster ad that could be displayed at a bus stop. Um, this one um, showing our slogan, Black History is Your History, and on the sides also listing out the names of people that were murdered um, in the massacre, um, and in the background showing an image of the aftermath of the massacre. Um, so our team also did some ambient. Um, so Oklahoma is known to be a flyover state. So our team chose to display our slogan on the top of the Greenwood Rising History Center, um, where people passing over can look and see and locate this historical center and also see the slogan, Black History is Your History, um, probably driving them to go and figure out what this is and be curious about it. Um, as you can see on the sidewalk, there is text along the bottom. We are calling this the 300 steps. This is meant to symbolize those who lost their lives during the Tulsa race massacre. And each of these steps will have the name of an individual that died in the massacre. And the special thing about it is we understood that that area looks to be new, looks that it does not want to be tampered with uh, because it is new flooring. Um, so we came up with the idea of using a certain paint that uh, it's actually displayed at one of our statues here at the university, the Gosper statue, and it is visible whenever it rains. And so we believe that whenever it rains, seeing these texts could create a very somber moment because the, main, uh, the rain would mean to symbolize the ends of the fires, just like I said, uh, create a very somber moment and displaying these names. Thank you very much. We'd like to thank the uh, symposium, uh, Synopsis Committee uh, and the facilitators of this event for your time and uh, thank you very much. Hello, my name is Abraham Mendieta. I am a senior double majoring in advertising and sociology. Uh, my name is Cole. I am a junior advertising major. And I'm Megan Key. I'm also a junior advertising major. And this is our campaign for Greenwood Wise Rising 16 Hours. So for our strategy, uh, we decided to emphasize the duration of the massacre and build up awareness for the new Greenwood Rising History Center. Um, so we designed a new logo for it. So it's the Greenwood Rising History Center and then the um, green marks that are on the bottom and to the right of it symbolize the architecture that's on, the, on what the building is going to be. Um, there's like little specks of lines and kind of that's what we wanted to symbolize throughout the logo as well. 
So in researching this, um, this massacre, one thing stuck out to our group, and that was the duration of the massacre was 16 hours. And 16 hours is a long time, especially under the circumstances that the victims were under. Um, fire blazing all around them, smoke filling the sky, watching as their livelihoods and city burned to the ground. Um, so our group wanted to tell a story through um, the perspective of the victim and through their eyes. So in our design, our main element is our numbers. Um, and so in these numbers, we have a picture of the destruction after the massacre, um, symbolizing the devastation that was caused within the 16 hours. Um, another element in our print designs is the smoke. It adds a dramatic effect and also pulls the viewer in. Um, our subtitles, um, for example, here, it's um, of heart pounding fear, um, kind of gives it a emotional element um, and gives you a sense of what the victims were feeling, um, establishing a emotional connection for the viewer. Um, here, we broke it down into minutes, kind of giving the viewer a different perspective um, on the 16 hours. And then here we broke it down into seconds, doing the same thing. Um, and so in each of our print ads, we have a call to action through the logo um, at the top and then through information on how to get more information and learn more at the um, Historic Center. And then we also decided to design a street sticker. So this is kind of more for the Tulsa community area. Um, it again, has the logo that we made. And then as you get closer to the history center, it'll be like 20 steps away from the Greenwood Rising History Center and stuff like that. And it gets, as it gets closer, kind of to attract that in, that in Tulsa community. And then kind of moving on to our social media. Um, again, we wanted to kind of go play on and cause that emotion by breaking down the hours and minutes. Um, so you can um, so these are three of our social media ads. Again, it's breaking down into minutes, seconds, and then one ad on the very last ad has all three of them. Um, again, to kind of raise that emotion, kind of put into perspective how long the duration of this massacre was and kind of put into more perspective how damaging it was for the community. Um, these are another set of our social. Um, they kind of tie more into the print ads and can be utilized when darker posts are necessary. Um, again, you can click the button to learn more and it'll bring you to the site. Okay. And so our last media for this campaign is a series of radio spots. So there are a total of nine radio spots and they all util utilize the theater of the mind in order to put the listener in the shoes of someone um, in 1921 and throughout the duration of the massacre. And these radio spots can also easily be changed to be used as an audio exhibit uh, within the History Center. And all of these radio spots have an intro that would read, join us, take a look back at Greenwood 100 years ago, Katie Dunham reporting for KRMG, and then uh, the added date for the specific uh, script. So this is from uh, the second of the nine scripts that we made. Um, in this script, uh, the reporter Katie is still reporting from her studio and it reads, this is Katie Dunham with KRMG, bringing you an update on the alleged assault that took place in the Drexel Building elevator yesterday afternoon. The Tulsa County Sheriff arrested Dick Rowland earlier today and have placed him in Tulsa County Jail. There are rumors of a possible lynch mob forming in response to the alleged assault. More updates uh, as the situation develops. And then this is the eighth of the nine scripts. Uh, in this script, Katie has moved from her studio to Greenwood itself, where she is giving reports as the violence of the massacre is happening all around her. There would be continuous background noise uh, filled with yelling, screaming, gunshots, uh, the explosions of bombs that were coming from planes, and the whoosh of flames that spilled out from the windows of the buildings. The script is not meant to be read all at once, but it's meant you know, to have uh, uh, pauses within it that are filled with uh, the described background noises. And the script reads, this is the 10th hour of my reporting. Violence won't let up. Firefighters tried to enter the district, but they were driven away by angry armed mobs. People are being beaten everywhere you look. I can't even believe what I'm seeing. Police aren't here to help. I don't even know what to say. And then to tie each of these to a close, we have an outro that reads, learn more about the Tulsa Rays massacre at the Greenwood Rising Ministries. That is the end. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Luke Geisel. I was the copywriter for this presentation.
I'm Lindsay Garner. I was one of the art directors. Um, our other art director unfortunately couldn't be here today, but his name is Carter Owens. And the name of our campaign today is Buried History. Uh, the campaign goal for this, um, as you know, it's a new Centennial Museum. We obviously wanted to drive people there, get the awareness out. And we think the best way to do this was kind of creating a sense of mystery. The history of this events, or these events were so unknown for so long that um, now they're finally being uncovered. We thought mystery would be the best way to do that. So I'm going to go through a few of our concepts before jumping into the mock-ups. Um, our first one. It, um, it says, wealthy, affluent, black owned and operated, burned to the ground and they never told us, find out why. So as you can see through all of our ads, we're gonna be showing like these old pictures from um, Greenwood back then and the massacre. And um, as you can see in like the top left, um, it says Tulsa race riots with the riots crossed out and it says massacre, um, just to kind of highlight the fact that it was a massacre and that's kind of you know, what it's referred to now. And then this is another one. It says Pearl Harbor 9-11 Tulsa race massacre. Two of these were taught in school and one wasn't. So again, this just highlights the fact that, you know, not many people know about this, even though it was just as big of a deal as like Pearl Harbor and 9-11. Um, and then as you can see underneath the photo, it says hashtag buried history. Um, just to kind of tie together the entire campaign, we, we will be using that hashtag. And then this is another one. It just says, discover what was hidden from you. Um, again, kind of showing the mystery of the whole thing. Um, and then kind of urging people to go to Greenwood Rising to see what was hidden from them. And then this one, it is actually a picture before the massacre. And it says Greenwood District was a safe haven for black Americans until it was destroyed. The, destru the destruction was largely covered up until today. So first we're gonna do some social media ads on Facebook and Instagram. And this is just an example of a Facebook ad with one of those ads that I just showed you. So it's the one that says wealthy affluent black owned and operated burned to the ground and they never told us find out why. And the caption says, discover what was hidden from you and with the hashtag buried history. And then it also includes the URL to go to the Greenwood Rising website to learn more and hopefully plan their visit to go to the History Center. And then next is an example of an Instagram post. Um, again, this is the one that says, um, Greenwood District was a safe haven for Black Americans. Um, until it was destroyed. The destruction was largely covered up until today. Um, again, this one has the learn more button to take them to the website to learn more. And then this is just an Instagram story. Um, this is the one that talks about, um, it says Pearl Harbor 9-11, Tulsa race, Tulsa race Massacre. Two of these were taught in school and one wasn't. So um, with this ad specifically, we would do different variations of it throughout the campaign. Um, kind of noting other um, tragedies that have happened. We thought this one was very powerful just because it's all for generations, you know, 9-11 is many Americans' worst day of their lives. Um, and for many Americans who were there that day, this was the worst day of their lives. And we wanted to just kind of stretch, stretch the feeling and equate the two. Yeah. And then next we're gonna be doing some print ads. So first, this is a newspaper ad, um, and it's similar to the ones that we've seen before, um, just kind of talking about how this area was burned to the ground and nobody really told anybody about it. <clears throat> At least for me, I'm from Texas and I had only just now heard about it this semester. And so again, that's just kind of what we're trying to highlight. And then also, as you can see on the bottom right of this ad is our URL, which we are going to want to show on all of our print ads to get people to go visit the website and learn more. And then this is a billboard. It just says, discover what was hidden from you, hashtag buried history, again, with the URL and then another picture from the massacre. And then lastly, we have this outdoor poster that, again, just says, discover what was hidden from you. 
um, with the hashtag buried history and the URL as well. And then for our last ad, we wanted to get creative with it. We wanted to kind of like kind of a physical embodiment of how much damage was done that day. So if, um, we we know there was already a light concept that's being used for the museum, um, but this would be a little bit different. This would be more of a permanent installment. Um, if you look on the map, these are the outlines of the original Greenwood district and where it was burned. So we wanted to have a light um, where all the yellow dots are pointing into the sky. So it kind of show the, the size of the Greenwood district originally and just how much destruction was done. And I think it'd be a powerful constant reminder. And that'd be kind of, that's kind of what it would look like in downtown Tulsa. Um, uh, yes. And we, we do want to note that that would be like more of a permanent installation. I know um, there was another piece of art that was shown earlier today that was, um, I guess, kind of. Uh, it was more rotating and uh, it would have been more of a be semi-permanent thing. This would be more of a permanent thing just to serve as a constant reminder. So thank you guys. Uh, hello, my name is Sarah Reitmeyer and I was one of the art directors for this team. Hello, my name is Michael Williams, and I was the copywriter for this team. And I'm Mason Board. I was the other art director. I'm a senior advertising student here. Awesome. So um, this is our team's production. Um, our campaign was If These Streets Could Talk. Now, a little bit of background on our campaign. Um, we really chose If These Streets Could Talk as the main message for our campaign, just because I'm sure as a lot of you guys have already heard, we didn't learn about the Tulsa Race Massacre in school, right? Um, a lot of it was burned down and it was never spoken about again. So we kind of wanted to explore this idea of if these streets could talk, the streets of, you know, a community, a prospering community of Black people that was taken away, if they could talk, what would they say? And what stories could we learn from them? And so the first thing we decided to do was design a logo for Greenwood. And as you can see, we have two logos here. This first one is a longer one, and you would see this feature on things like the side of buildings or just ads that otherwise would not have the name of the history center in it. We wanna make sure that whoever's looking at these ads knows what the ad is for. And of course, we also have a minimized version, which we would use for things where if there's maybe less real estate or if the name of the history center is already on it and we don't want it to be redundant. And as for the color selection, we wanted to do something that was really eye catching. And as you'll see in a minute, all of our ads are very dark gray tone. They're quite somber looking. And we wanted the yellow to really stand out and really be visible against all of the ads. All right, so next we have our TV spot and a accompanying storyboard. So one of the things that really inspired us as we were making this TV spot was actually my Angelou's uh, and Still I Rise poem. Um, this TV spot is supposed to be read like a poem um, via several different voice actors, and I'll actually read that right now. All right, if these streets could talk, then we'd know about a thriving Black community in the heart of Tulsa, a true symbol of the American dream. a center of wealth, hope, and prosperity. If these streets could talk, then we'd know how the peace was taken away by a white mob fueled with hate. They tell us 16 hours of death, horror, fire, destruction, and injustice. If these streets could talk, then we'd know about the 100 years of white silence. A community betrayed and forgotten denied for decades. If these streets could talk today, they tell stories of a century of black resilience, a community rebuilt and a history remembered. If these streets could talk, they tell stories of protests, strength, and a continuing fight for justice. If these streets could talk, would you listen? All right, so now that Michael has introduced the, the TV spot and the storyboard accompanying it, I'm gonna introduce some of the, the socials that we did for this campaign. So all of these follow a common theme and that theme is uh, if these streets could talk, kind of uh, personifying the streets and the story that has been told here. 
the last hundred years. So our first is an Instagram spot. Um, if these streets could talk, they'd speak with 16 hours of terror. And then um, the second one we have, and our caption for that is our history is your history too. Second, we have a Facebook post, uh, the whole community of history and identity erased in 16 hours, learn more. And we link the website to Greenwood Rising Center. Uh, and that spot reads, if these streets could talk, they speak of a hundred years of injustice. And then lastly, we have another Facebook post example. Um, and this one also deals, this one is, if these streets could talk, they'd speak of 35 blocks of destruction, which is obviously the amount of blocks there were in Greenwood hundred years ago. And now for our outdoor spots, we have uh, following the same tagline for our campaign. This is an outdoor billboard, uh, pretty powerful. It's just, if these streets could talk, would you finally listen? And we have the short informed of our logo. So we have the website on the left. And then these are uh, some outdoor poster mock-ups that we made and this, um, follows the 100 years theme and then also the greenwood rising and the second one with the we rise so it starts with 100 years of res resilience the fight continues um, and these pictures were all taken by michael during um the protests or, or the yeah the protests over the summer so um it makes the imagery just that more powerful second we have uh you know the dude standing with his fist up and it says even now we rise and then lastly, we have 100 years ago, um, I'm sorry, I need to move this, community erased and today the fight continues. And we have the long form of the logo on all those three posters. Okay, and the final thing we created for our campaign was interactive. And this was something we designed because we really wanted people not only to learn about the history of Greenwood and what had happened there, but we also wanted them to learn about the people who were like most affected by it and we wanted them to really connect with these stories so we designed an app that would be called if these streets could talk and it features the short greenwood rising logo as the app symbol and basically the way that this would work is we would place these posters around the greenwood area around tulsa at large and each of these posters features a excerpt of a quote from someone who was there at the massacre and they survived and they're retelling their story what had happened and you basically log onto the app. There's a QR code on each of the posters. And when you scan the QR code, it will take you to this page that will give you the name of the survivor, a picture of them, an about tab where you can learn about their story as well as the full length of the quote. And an idea we had for this was we really, in order to even make this a deeper connection with the survivors, none of them unfortunately are still living today, but we had an idea to make them be read by either relatives or family friends of the survivors or even members of who were involved with the construction of Greenwood Rising because we really wanted this to be read out by someone who had really been impacted by Greenwood and more than just learning about it in school. And so this is our first poster and we have two more as well designed. And so we are the last group to be presenting for this panel. So on behalf of not only us, but all of the other groups that presented today, we want to say thank you so much for our time. And we really, really hope that you enjoyed what we presented. Thank you. Thank you, guys.